Hello and welcome back to today's video where I'm going to show you guys how to install an NVMe inside your brand new PS5 system. Now, I am going to mention something straight off the bat, which I'm sure you're aware while watching this video. Sony, at this current date of recording, uh, the 19th of November 2020, they have not enabled the NVMe bay inside. And although you can physically install one of these NVMe's inside, you're not gonna be able to utilize it at this stage. Today's video is just showing you how to do it. I've already done a video before showing you what happens if you install one right now, and ultimately you won't be able to turn the system on. The PlayStation will say, no can do, until you remove that SSD, I'm not going any further. Hopefully there's a graphic on screen. So today's video is more about something you might wanna check out later on, but it's also to help you guys understand just how easy it is to upgrade the internal SSD bay inside this. You've got the core super fast 9000 megs per second compressed SSD inside, and this is how to add an NVMe expansion. But just remember, right now at the time of recording, you can't operate with that drive inside. This is for later on when they enable that feature, when the likes of Seagate and Samsung and WD start releasing those super fast SSDs. So then PlayStation can add those to the compatibility list. But let's go straight ahead. Now, the first thing you need to do is make sure you've got the system disconnected. I've done this installation both with and without the system being initialized. It doesn't matter. Of course, down the line, when you want to operate it, you're going to have to get it set up with the firmware and stuff. But right now, don't worry too much about uh, having it initialized or not. You can do this straight out of the box. Just remember, you can't utilize this feature yet. And I, will, I won't say that again, maybe at the end. So you've got the system, and this is utilizing it in a stand-up mode. And as you can see, the system there on the base, we have got that screw right there. Now, you're going to need a flat head screwdriver. To do this, I'm going to use this flathead, and you will need a crosshead screwdriver later on in the video. But for now, what we're going to do is remove that screw from the base. Remember, loosey, loose, um, lefty loosey, righty tighty. And I'll be honest, I had that in my head for the majority of the time I was doing this device the first time during our NVMe um, test videos uh, that came previously. So remove that there, it's very straightforward. And again, as soon as you've done a few turns, you can do the rest of it by hand. Remove that screw, and remember, there is a small bay inside this system that you can pop that screw into so you don't lose it, which is always quite handy. And then you can just move that over there. Then from here, what you need to do, and this is if you've got the device with the disk drive inside, is you see the side with the PlayStation logo? Make sure that side is face down, okay? Next, with the disk drive side facing you, get your hand under the top corner there, opposite to the disk drive down there. So this is at the top of the device, here on the rear of it. Pull it up and slide it back. So again, let's do that again, just so you can see it there on camera. So again, you put your hand at the top, other hand at the base of the device, don't worry, you won't break it, and just pull back, and then it pulls and lifts straight up. That's how easy it is to remove that panel. It's sturdy, but it's very easy to remove. And inside there is the contents of our PS5 here. Now, what we're interested in is this. This bay here at the top. This is the NVMe SSD bay. Now, what we need to do, and if I remove that close to the camera that you can see it, there's a flat head screw up here with the PlayStation logo on it. So let's bring that closer to the camera. That screw there. What we need to do is to remove that screw. Get your flat cross head screwdriver there. And again, lefty loosey, remove that screw out of there. And again, quite a longish screw as you can see there. Keep hold of that, pop that to one side. And then the panel lifts. It's hinged at the back, and then that comes off. And that reveals to us the NVMe bay, as we see right there. Now, you see those little circles and notches inside? That is because different length NVMe SSDs need to be held in a different location. Now, they do support up to the very longest 22110 length NVMEs right now, and they're not currently really commercially available, commercially at least, in PCIe Gen 4x4. So do bear in mind that the length of the SSD 
will make a difference here. Now inside, you can see a screw already in place, the black screw at the base there. So where the line of SSD bay is, there's a little black screw there. What you need to do is remove the top of that screw. Now, by default, this screw will be at the top end. So if we remove that out of there, you remove the black screw first, like so. Remove that screw. And then inside you'll see a silver circle underneath it. You see it there? Now by default, that notch will be in this bay here. So if it is in that bay when you purchase the device, just remove the black screw and lift up the silver notch and put it inside that bay there. Now, once you've done that, get your NVMe SSD and you can't really install it wrong. The NVMEs have a little tooth there on the end of it there. So as long as that tooth is on the top there, so make sure when you're installing it that that one tooth is on the outside of the chassis, like so. So from here, you need to install the NVMe at an angle. It will slot straight in. And as you can see, it will just go straight into the bay and it will spring up slightly. And I'll go through that in a moment. But that is how easy it is to install that NVMe in that bay. Now, from here, what you need to do is get that small screw that we got earlier on, a small black screw. Then, where the NVMe is, just lightly tap it down and you'll see that the edge of that NVMe, let's bring that up to you guys, is over the circle. Do you see it there? The circle at the end? That circle is where we need to put the screw that we've removed. And this will keep the SSD in place. Simply drop the screw into place, grab your screwdriver, and start putting it back in righty tighty. Now, it's worth bearing in mind that right now, because this expansion bay is not currently active, we don't know too much about heat sinks. Maybe later down the line, because you can get NVMEs that arrive with a heat sink on top, as well as you, you can get thermal padding. And right now, there is a huge amount of space inside that bay on top of the NVME, as you can see right there. So right now, there's probably room to pop a heat sink in there. And also, it's worth highlighting that that metal plate is slightly dipped in so there is room when installing it so once you're done get your metal plate there pop it there on the side pop it down like so and then simply reapply the screw and put that into there and again grab a screwdriver say it with me righty tighty put it inside and that's it after that we can grab the sides there and have a look as you can see, all pre-installed. And from here, we simply need to reapply the top of the casing. So we pop that there. And again, just if you have the disc version, align the disc with the disc tray. If you don't have the disc version, you can easily tell what's the front because it has the raised flat bit there. And just make sure you go with the front of the panel, not the side with the ports. And then simply pop it on, put the base um, loose first, pop it on there, you can feel the grooves go in and then it goes straight on. And that is how straightforward it is to install an NVMe on this device. Once again, last time I say it, I promise, right now this feature is not enabled on PS5 and this video is about guiding you through just how easy it is to upgrade it. NVMe's that will support um, the likes of 9,000 megabytes per second thanks to improved controllers on those SSDs are coming relatively soon. And when they arrive from the major SSD manufacturers and SSD uh, uh, product release companies, then Sony will uh, fully integrate that feature. But right now, if Sony installed that feature right now, chances are that you'd end up buying an SSD and then it's not going to do the job a few years down the line as games get better and can harness that speed. So for now, them disabling that feature makes a lot of sense to me, although it is a bit of a gut. So 
right now what we're doing is we're preparing for that update release and i will be bench testing a range of ssds in the ps5 system all of them have a varying performance and we will be doing game testing once that feature is enabled as well as revisiting drive installation with regards to heat sinks and seeing what's the best third party heat sinks out there but for now this has been how to install physically at least the nvme ssd drives into these uh, PlayStation 5 upgrade slot. I hope you guys found it useful. Maybe not now, but hopefully you'll find it useful a few months. Let me know how 2021 is going in there in the comments. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Click like if you've enjoyed the video. Click subscribe to learn more as more and more SSDs are released that will function on this system when they enable the feature and then you'll be the first to know and effectively know the right drives to buy for yourselves. But these drives were supplied by Span.com, the NAS experts and data storage specialists for nearly 30 years. Do check them out. It is a plug, but come on, it doesn't make it not true. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.